Okay, so let's see if you're going to make this very common percent math error in trying to solve this problem, which is the following. The price of a new house went up 30%. If the house cost $275,000, what was the original price? Okay, so that is the problem. Feel free to use a calculator, but we do have a multiple choice question here. And let's take a look at our answers. So A is $192,500, B is $211,538, C is $82,500, and D is $164,410. Okay, so feel free to use a calculator, but if you have an answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll share the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly tell you who I am. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you're frustrated with math, or if you really want to understand the subject, then check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so let's go ahead and take another look at this question before I show you the answer. Now, some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you really should update your um, you know, videos because you know homes uh, right now, unfortunately, are not around $275,000. I'm pretty sure you can find some houses uh, for that amount, at least in the United States. Uh, unfortunately, homes are really gone up. But let's go ahead and take a look at this problem again. So the price of a new house went up 30%. Okay, so if the house cost $275,000, what was the original price? Now here you might be saying, hey, you're talking about a new house. Maybe you're selling it for the first time. Well, you know, I'm talking about a house that went up in value 30% or its cost went up in value. So maybe I need to edit this problem, but I think most of you are like, yes, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I understand what you're talking about. What was the original or uh, old price before this house went up in value. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. And if your answer is A, $192,500, well, congratulations, uh, that is not correct. Now you might be saying, stop playing with my emotions, Mr. YouTube Math Man. The correct answer actually is B, which is $211,538. Now, uh, I'm really kind of joking around here because I want uh, those of you that did answer uh, with this not to feel so bad because this is probably the result of making this very common percent math there I am talking about, all right? So no big deal. We're going to go ahead and correct that right now. And if you're like, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm totally lost. Well, again, we're going to review some basic percent in just one second. But if you got this uh, correct, well, congratulations. You definitely get a happy face and an A+. Plus. And let's go ahead and get into the problem. And the first thing that we want to do is notice that we have a math multiple choice question. Now, just by looking at these answers, is there any answers that don't make any sense, right? So hopefully, most of you are like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, this is definitely an answer that doesn't make sense because we're talking about the original cost of this house, right? Could that um, house cost 82,000 and change and then go up 30%? Well, if it went up 100%, well, let me just ask you this. If a house cost um, $80,000, right? And let's say the cost went up 50%, okay? What would be the new cost of that house or what would be the additional amount that you have to pay. Well, 50% is one half of this amount, right? So you're talking about a $40,000 increase, okay? So if a house went up 30%, which is less than 50%, uh, you can see that 80 and 40,000 or 80,000, 40,000, you're not going to get back to $275,000, which is which uh, the house currently costs, right? So we can kind of eliminate this answer. And obviously, these answers right here are pretty close to one another. This 192,000 and 211,000, these are what I would call reasonable answers. And this one out here is, uh, for those of you that are pretty good in percent, uh, is another um, uh, question or another answer, excuse me, that I think could be eliminated. But here's the bottom line. If this wasn't a multiple choice question, you just simply have to know the math. But in this case, if you know how to find the percent or how to find percent of a number, 
uh, you should be able to use a calculator and just identify through trial and error that this is the correct answer. Okay, so what am I talking about? Well, let's go ahead and just do a quick review of, of how to find a percent of a number. So let's suppose I want to find 30% of $112, right? So how do we find the percent of a number? Well, what we need to do is change that percent to a decimal. So that's going to be 0 0.30. So uh, how does this work, actually? We're going from a percent to a decimal. Well, the definition of percent really is comparing this number, this percent number, to 100. Okay, it's, In other words, we're going to take that percent number and write it as a fraction where the denominator is 100. So 30% is equivalent to the fraction uh, 30 over 100. Now I could cross cancel these uh, zeros right here. So 3 over 10 is what? That's 3 tenths. See, 0.3 is 3 tenths if you understand place value, right? Or the decimal uh, 0 0.30. Okay, so we have this extra zero here, but really we could, we could drop that. But how do we go from percent uh, to a decimal? Well, you divide by 100. And the result of dividing by 100 is moving the decimal point over two places to the left. So if you have 30.0% and I want to change this to a decimal, well, you're dividing by 100, but the result is moving the decimal point over two places to the left. Okay, so if you understand that, you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I get all this stuff. Well, that's excellent. So here we have 30% uh, uh, as a decimal, that's 0.3, and you're, then we're going to simply multiply by the number 112, and we'll get our calculator out. We can go 0 0.30 times 112, and then whatever the uh, number this is, that is the answer. Okay, so if you understand how to find the percent <coughs> excuse me, of a number, then we can kind of reason through because we're looking for the original price of this house, right? So maybe my problem is like, hey, uh, a new home builder, right, uh, listed the, um, the price, the original price of this house for one thing, and then they, um, you know, increase the price, right? So I guess this could be an actual problem. But what you could do is be like, all right, well, if um, 211,000, in other words, you could be checking these answers right here. And when you get to 200 or 211,538, what we could do is what? Well, we would take 30% of this number, okay? And then add that increase value to the original price and see if it comes out to $275,000. And you're, of course, you're going to see this math, you know, does work out. But uh, a lot of people probably answered with this answer, and this is a reasonable answer. It's not so far away from $211,000, right? So let's go ahead and just kind of model what's going on in our brain. So you could, again, as long as you understand uh, the question and um, uh, how to find the percent of a number, kind of reverse engineer and figure out the right answer. All right, now we do have a math word problem. So always use the rule of three, which is to read the problem at, le at least three times before you start doing any math, understand really what's going on, and then try to model the problem. Now, some of you might be saying, all right, how can I model this problem? Well, you have a house here, right? And uh, this home uh, went up in value, or the cost, the price went up in value. So we're looking for the original amount, okay? So the price went up 30%, and now it is 275 $275,000, right? So after a 30% increase, we're looking for the original uh, price of the home. Okay, so how can we do this? Well, I'm going to show you what a lot of people uh, misinterpret in, ter in terms of percent, uh, percent math problems. They'll misinterpret the problem and they'll approach it this way, which actually um, is kind of logical, but you got to be really careful because you can end up with the wrong answer. All right, so someone might say, okay, this house went up 30%. So if I want to find the uh, original value, maybe uh, that means that I need to go 30% in this direction. In other words, let's just find 30% of $275,000, and then we'll subtract away that 30% of $75,000 to get back to the original price. Well, that kind of makes sense, right? I mean, it's somewhat logical, and uh, the answer is, is actually pretty close to the actual answer, but it's wrong. So let's go ahead and uh, do this math right now. So 30% of 275,000 is what? That is going to be 0.3, and we're going to multiply that by 275,000. So that is 82,500. So that's why I have this answer in um, 
the multiple choice uh, question options because some of you may have uh, taken 30 percent of this number. You got to be really careful when it comes to math questions because math teachers are generally kind of tricky. So if you answered with this number, well, that's the result of 30 percent of $275,000. But of course, that's not the original cost of the house. But you might be saying, all right, well, uh, let's take this number and the, subtract it away from the original or the new price of the house, right? So $275,000, uh, 30% of this, okay, is uh, 82,500. So we're going to back away 30%. And when we do that, we end up with 192,500. Now, at first glance, this seems fairly reasonable, right? So a lot of you might be like, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm going to get an A+. Plus. Unfortunately, you're not going to get an A+. Plus. But, uh, you know, maybe I'll give you a B. Well, you'll certainly pass my little pop quiz. But let's go ahead and see why this is wrong, okay? So here is the question, right? So the price of a new house went up 30%. So if the house cost 275000 what was the original price? So in other words, here we have a home, okay? And whatever uh, this price is right here, okay, this is, of course, what we're looking for. And let's just go back here. Let's call it 192000 We're like, all right, if this is 192000 that's our answer. And then this house went up 30%. Well, 30% of 192000 in terms of an increase should get us back to $275,000. So let's go ahead and check that math right now. Okay, so if our house actually cost 192500 that was the original or uh, old price, and now we have a 30% increase, well, what does that mean? Well, we have to find 30% of 192500 Okay, in other words, we're going to multiply 192500 by 0.3. Okay, so we'll use our calculator. 0 0.3 times 192500 is 57750 Okay, so that would be a $57,750 increase of the price, right? So again, this is making sense, or I mean, it feels pretty good. Uh, you know, it's like logical, You're like, all right, but let's just go ahead and tack on this increase to that. And when we do that, 192,500, this is the price of the house. This is 30% of this, okay? So when we add these two together, we're gonna get back to 200, or we're gonna get to 250,250, uh, all right? Well, this is not the 275 that we're looking for, okay? So we're not quite there. So 192,500 is the wrong answer. Now, again, if you answered uh, with 192,500 and you did the problem in this way, this is a very common type of error. And of course, I'm gonna solve uh, the problem uh, correctly in just one second. But first, I'm gonna show you this, and that is an invitation to support this YouTube channel. You see, my channel is all about trying to make math clear, understandable, and interesting, but I'm trying to reach as many people as possible, so I definitely could use your help, and the best way you can support this channel is to hit that subscribe button and that bell notification. Now, I just kind of want to remind uh, some of you out there that maybe you've watched my videos or maybe you're new to my channel. I'm going to leave a link uh, to a particular math course that I built uh, maybe about a year ago or so, this is my latest uh, course, and it's called Math Skills Rebuilder, right? Because I have a lot of folks that are not students but just enjoy math or maybe need to relearn math or maybe just want to relearn math as a hobby. Well, this is the course for you. So in this particular course, I cover basic math, percent, order of operations, fractions, decimals, all that stuff that we forgot way back in elementary and middle school. But then I get into a ton of algebra, geometry, even some basic trigonometry and some basic probability and statistics. So if you are interested in recapturing uh, a lot of the math that you once knew, well, this is the course for you. And I have other courses. I'll put links to those in the description as well. Okay, so how are we going to solve this problem? Well, I am going to use algebra. Algebra is just going to make uh, things so much easier. So let's uh, use a variable like x to represent the old price of the house, right? So we know that our new price is 275000 but the old price, we don't know what it is. So let's use a variable to represent that old price. So I'm going to let x represent that old price. Now we have to be very careful here, okay? The house went up, the, uh, the original cost of the house went up 30%. So here is the original cost of the house. We're going to call that X. And we have a 30% increase on the original cost of the house, right? So here is the cost of the house, 
the old price of the original price plus the increase, which is going to be 0.3 times that old cost, okay, whatever the original cost is. So this is the increase, the 30% increase, and this is the actual cost of the house. Together, when we add the old price of the house plus the 30% increase, we're going to get back to $275,000. So we need to set up an equation, and this is it. Okay, so we have 0.3x plus x is equal to 275,000. So here we have like terms. This is an x and this is, uh, this is an x. But what's in front of this x right here? Well, there's a 1. So we're going to add these together. So that's going to be 1 plus 0.3, which, of course, is going to be uh, 1.3. All right, so we're going to add like terms. So we've got 1.3x is equal to $275,000. So to solve for x, all we have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 1.3. Again, we're going to be using our calculator. And we're going to get x is equal to $211,538. Okay, so let's go ahead and check this work just to make sure it is correct. So if that is the original price, okay, or the old price of the house, and we had a 30% increase, well, 30% of 211,538, we'll just take that 211,538, multiply it by uh, 0.30. I did the math for you. So here it is. That's $63,461. Now when we add these two together, we get back to 274999 That's pretty close to the actual uh, new price, $275,000. Okay, so if there is one thing that you want to understand in terms of mathematics, that is percent, because, uh, because percent is probably the number one most practical math skill that we all need to understand because it's so linked to our personal finances, right? So if you want to understand the money or how to manage your money, you got to understand percent. Matter of fact, if you think about it, how often do we see that percent, uh, percent symbol uh, throughout the day. We're constantly seeing this percent symbol. Every time you look at your cell phone and seeing how much battery you have left, it's in percent. If you go to a store or if you're on the internet, you're looking at ads, sales price, uh, you know, interest rates, the news. you got to understand percent. If you do nothing else, you know, do a quick review. But in order to understand percent, you got to understand decimals. you got to understand fractions. And I can, of course, help you out with all that stuff. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.